Hello again, and welcome to another episode of Homeschooling Helps. I'm Andrea Schwartz, and I'm joined by my co-host, Nancy Wilk. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Andrea. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. So today, we're going to continue exploring different facets of homeschooling from the teacher's perspective, from the student's perspective, and even from the curriculum perspective. So Nancy, why don't you introduce our topic? Yeah, Andrea, today I want to talk about current events. There's a lot of things happening in the world and with social media being what it is and our access to the internet, we can really find out what's going on um, in any part of the world immediately. And so, what I want to talk about is how important should that study of current events be in our homeschooling curriculum? The reason I like that question, and when we talked about it, I think it is important to unravel and unpack and talk about, is because it has everything to do with orientation. Um, a new phrase that we hear on social media is, what's trending? Now, yeah. what most people don't ask is, who's making the decision as what's trending? By the same token, when you look at the news, if you turn on network news or cable news, some editor, some executive has made the decision that says this is news. Now, one of the things that always seems to happen on television news or even radio news, we hear about the disasters. There's a flood here. There's a volcano there. There was a terrorist action here. And it's very easy to get very um, concerned about how bad everything is, especially if you're in your home and you're, you're on your, your laptop or you're looking at your smartphone and this is all the things you hear. Now, in a very real sense, those are current events. And... Yes. One of the things that I experience is you run into somebody and say, did you hear about the latest tweet from such and such? Well, number one, I'm not on Twitter, so I don't pay any attention to that. But you know what? A lot of people seem to know about it. He said this. She said that. Do you know how this person did that to her? So in other words, somebody is setting a narrative that says this is what's important. Network news doesn't tell us about the surgeon who saved someone's life or the firefighter or the paramedic who risked his life to go in and get someone out of a building. Now, we hear about those things sometimes, like the cave accident in Thailand, but how many times do things like that happen in our own communities, but they aren't trending? Right. So we really need to have a view of what we even mean by current events. Mm -hmm. One thing, when you were talking about you know, on that tweeting thing and who says what, that sounds a whole lot like gossiping me, you know, just to stop right there. How much of what is current events and trending is really gossip. Uh, I had a young woman tell me, I think this is a great, um, a great definition. She said that she learned the definition of, of gossip was if you were um, discussing information that you were not part of the solution. Right. You know, right. so if we're talking about stuff and we're not part of the solution, maybe it's gossip and we need to stop right there. So that's one thing also that we need to recognize it when we're talking about these things. Is it something that we can really be a part of bringing a solution to additionally? Right. And, and some people might say, well, I'm not saying anything about it. You know, I'm liking it or I'm going amen or whatever it is. But I think a lot has to do with where our focus is. If we go to Facebook, if we go to social media, if we go to the television or the radio to find out what's important in the world, then mm -hmm. we're really allowing someone else to be the gatekeeper. And True. one of the things I learned as I started my homeschool and one of the advantages of having someone talk in my position now, I homeschooled for over 28 years. And so over those 28 years, I made a lot of decisions that, guess what, I wouldn't make right now. And a lot of them had to do with what I thought was important. So for my oldest, oh, there was a time where he could name all the presidents of the United States. And we were very proud of that. And he could name all the capitals of all the states. And he could, as he was practicing for a geography, he could tell about different countries. Well, of course, 
the more mature he got, he realized that the globe was out of date because there's some countries that didn't exist anymore. And you could learn all the presidents. That's fine. That wasn't really going to change. But, you know, we used to say, who's the cabinet members? Who's the secretary of the treasury? Who's the attorney general? Who's the secretary of state? And somehow or other, that was deemed that he was informed until I did a little bit more reading and studying. And I realized all this information had to do with politics and the civil government. Did he know the Ten Commandments by heart? Could he uh, talk about the genealogy of Jesus? Could he even talk about the books of the Bible? I mean, he had memorized all these other things. So I was placing an emphasis on something that it's not that it's useless, but is it the most important thing? I see. I see. Okay. okay. So you were putting current events um, as part of his foundation rather than the word of God and what God, what God requires of us. Well, no, I, it wasn't that we weren't learning the word of God. We were. But then okay. instead of it was almost like we have to read the newspaper. We have to find out what's happening in order for us to be able to relate to other people until I realized that the most important thing to learn is how to interpret the news. Now, I'm not suggesting that people, if they have a son or daughter who's interested in reading newspapers or whatever it is, but you've got to spend extra time in identifying what's the world view behind how these current events are being played out. And one of the things, if you go to a cable station, go to the so-called conservative station, and then go to the liberal station, and then go to some station that considers itself in between, and they're all talking about the same thing, but they're reporting it very differently. So there must be something about orientation that we have to bring to a study of anything, but certainly the things that are happening in our world. Right. So um, we have to we have to look at the orientation of those people bringing the news. There's there's another. Um, maybe a uh, trend, maybe it's, it's not a trend, but some people would say, oh, well, we don't even do Facebook. We don't even listen to the news. We don't even have a TV, you know? And so they um, might would be more isolating themselves from what's, what's going on in a, a larger community. We don't want to do that. That's the total opposite extreme, but to be able to, recognize i think current events is 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 what's going to be re real current events is what's going to be history tomorrow and part of the unfolding plan of god that we can see happening now if we can distinguish between what's just sort of you know twitter twaddle and what is uh, that was cute little uh, just made a new word twitter twaddle um as opposed to what is legitimately um, current events as we see the, um, as we take a providential worldview and what God is really doing in, in our time that we live. Right. But let me just say this. You said current events today will be the history tomorrow, according to who writes the history books. See, we've gotten into textbooks as if the textbooks are the real facts. And there's a term which people may not be familiar with, actually it's a phrase, called brute factuality. In other words, there's two ways to look at things. Here are the facts, I'm just telling you the facts, as if facts exist in you know, the universe and we have to go snatch one. Oh look, there's a fact, let's take that, right? And then there's the idea that there are things that need to be interpreted and how are we going to interpret them? So is this fact going to be interpreted according to God and his word, or is it going to be interpreted in terms of humanism? And so that again means that you have to have a point of view. Now, nobody's a blank slate, despite what anybody wants to say, we all come out of the shoot with certain tendencies and perspectives. The Bible tells us that we're born in sin. And that what? sin that we inherited can be phrased as, I want what I want when I want it, and I want it my way. That's original sin. So guess yeah. what? 
the little baby who's hungry can create terror, <laughs> scream and yell and, and be also and, until it gets what it wants. Right. So part and parcel of training children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord has to do with orienting them to the basis of things. And so this current events, you know, that's silly about this idea that we know everything that's happening on a national level and a world level. And the president went to this country and NATO, this, whatever. Most government should be local government. And if you go back to a time before media, people knew who the mayor of their town was. People knew their neighbors. And so current events was Mrs. Jones just had a baby or Mr. Smith just lost his job. Maybe we could go help him out. Or yeah. I heard that there was a death in the family and um, now they're without sustenance. Maybe we should go to the widow's fund or the and see if we can help. See, those are the current events that we miss because we've decided that the most important current events are what's happening on this national level. And we become statist in our orientation even if we don't think we are. Status in our, our orientation, what does that mean? Okay, it means that the political realm, the area of civil government is the most important thing. So it's more important to know who the current president of the United States or the past 10 presidents, but you have no idea who your great grandfather was. You don't or know what he did. Say again? Or, or my next door neighbor. Right. But the Bible had family genealogies, not king genealogies. It wasn't he became king and then he became king. It's all in the context of families. And so when we have this orientation that says, oh, yeah, did you hear who's fighting with who? Or there's this big threat happening on Facebook and we really need to deal with, you know, all this kind of stuff is that we're putting an emphasis on something which I don't believe is God's emphasis. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. I see. We have a comment here about um, somebody who is running for city council in his area of Washington state, right? So the people of his town, the people of his area, he should work to let people know what he's doing and what he stands for. And hopefully the Christians and the homeschoolers and the Christian school people in the area will go and support him because mm -hmm. localism is really what the Bible talks about. Take care of that little patch of land that God has given you and the surrounding patches of land, rather than being so concerned about what's happening in a country that maybe or maybe not you could even point to on a map. Right, right. Okay. So, so I, I think that yeah. also, also the, the, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. It's distracting for me. Let me see if I can fix that. Okay. Um, when I think about current events, they I think about those those cumulatively becoming part of history. And so in that sense, there are some of those things that are important. Like I can remember um, years ago when I was a little girl um, watching the moon landing. You know, that was that was a current event worth paying attention to, you know, that's not going to happen again. Um, well, I'm going to stop you there, Nancy, and probably get a whole bunch of hate um, from it. But there are people who even question whether that was a current event when it was happening. There really? are a whole bunch of people who say there's a lot of things that don't line up. And the same thing could be said for 9-11 or the same thing could be said for many wars. I mean, I grew up at a time where Everybody knew that the communists were doing this or that in Vietnam. And that's why young men had to be sent off to fight. Right. Hmm. Except years later, we discover that the facts, the things that happened, didn't happen the way that we were told they happened. And as a result of the way in which this current event was being presented, people got behind something that they probably wouldn't have been behind. So, I'm not saying, you know, somebody says it's raining in Michigan and you say, I can't see it, so I don't believe it. But maybe it is raining in Michigan. Maybe it's raining in part of Michigan. Maybe um, maybe that's a, a false report. 
instead of trying to discern for right now, whether it's raining in Michigan, the better perspective is, am I failing to do the things God is calling me to do in my life right now in areas where I do have control and jurisdiction? And especially in a homeschool setting, let your children know that they should look for the good news as well as listening to all the bad news. Because if we believe in the victory that comes from people applying God's word in the context of being born again, then we should be seeing lots of good news as opposed to the bad news we keep getting fed. Right, right, right. Okay. So my history book for my life might be very different than my sister or brother's history book for our life because I'm going to write it from my personal point of view that is based on presuppositions. And so you may have a son or daughter who has interest in public policy and being able to understand things in the civil realm and actually want to pursue state um, service in terms of things that they do. Fine. But make mm -hmm. sure they do it as Christians as opposed to just absorbing the world and life view. It looks like we got a comment here. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. So I'll let the people read things on there. Sometimes we get commercials and I'm not necessarily interested in promoting <laughs> commercials, but people are certainly welcome to read the comments. Sure. Okay. okay. So, so um, you're not, not suggesting, suggesting that God is not working and unfolding his plan perfectly in our lives whether it's in big ways or small ways, you know, between me and my neighbors, me and my kids or country between country, God is still having his way. And those are things that I, I, I think that we need to have some cognizance of and recognition of as we go along, but certainly to be overwhelmed by what somebody else's um, agenda may be, that about um, their interpretation of that, we might need to to really e evaluate, is this true? What is God doing? We know that he says that he that that he is victorious, Christ is victorious. We know that he's destroying enemies. We know he is building his church. There's lots of things that we know God has said that he's going to do. So some of those things we see and should recognize, right? Okay. I'm going to get you to step back and actually okay. think about what you're saying. So history, his, capital H, story. We okay. need to have a biblical philosophy of history. And there happens to be a really good book, small, short book that R.J. Rush Jr. wrote that's available at Cal Seton called The Biblical Philosophy of History. So people can be helped out here in terms of how you're going to look at things. Right. So I wouldn't be so concerned with somebody missing out on an important event because they'll eventually be exposed to it if they're going to look. We've got to get away from there is this agenda other than God and his word that everybody has to line up with. Um, I can take 10 of my closest friends and guess what? We don't agree on everything. And mm -hmm. somebody could come into a conversation and say, wow, these people don't like each other. So no, we don't. We just have very definite points of view on specific things. But my close friends submit to the Lord Jesus Christ and his law word. And so what we're differing on is the interpretation of that rather than is there a God, is his word authoritative? So the whole idea of who sets the agenda. Now it's important if somebody says to your, one of your children and says, what do you think about, um, you know, Donald Trump? He's, he's in the news a lot. And they go, who's Donald Trump, right? That might be personally embarrassing for you if you're out in public and then go, oh my goodness, my children don't know who Donald Trump is. But in the end of the day, are they less godly? Are they less able to fulfill their calling under God? Because in 2018, they didn't happen to know who the president of the United States was at that given time. I don't think so. Right. And there's one other thing that I think is important for homeschoolers to understand. I've heard recently and I've um, witnessed people talking about they homeschooled for a while and then they had to send their children to school. 
for various reasons, economic, mom sick, whatever it is. Well, first and foremost, I would never advocate that you send your kid to public school. Find another way, you know, pay somebody who's homeschooling to help homeschool your children. Don't ever send them to public school. But let's say they have the wherewithal and they're going to send them to Christian school. And I've seen moms comment and say, well, you know, I put my kid in school and now he's so far behind the others. And I realized that we didn't do a good job. And I've even heard certain educators in Christian schools saying that when they have a homeschooled child who then comes into their classroom, they're different. But I wouldn't necessarily say they're behind because once again, we have this standard that says what somebody in third grade should be understanding and knowing and what someone shouldn't without realizing within that third grade class, there's a whole variety of understanding. Well, what I've seen happen is maybe in that setting, they don't know all the facts. They don't know all the things that the other students in the school know, but oftentimes they have a very deeper understanding of God and his word, and they know God's law. And by the time everybody grows up, what you constantly hear is that homeschooling students, you can tell who they are because they're articulate, because they'll look you in the eye and they're not so peer dependent. So sometimes when the homeschool children end up in a good Christian school, because they haven't been peer dependent, it looks like they're far behind and they're not mm -hmm. far behind. They're just different. Right, right. So sometimes that, um, agent well, not sometimes, a lot of times, all the time, that agenda of what is being presented as important in current events and even the, the things that the public school would say that you have to know to be on grade level. Those are not necessarily things that God says are important, not necessarily things that are contributing to our children's education and not helping them uh, unless they're really learning to um, uh, recognize that it's, wrong and what's wrong with that um, um, presuppositions in being presented, then it's not necessarily helping them to, to in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. We know that. So why I'm so, so adamant, why I'm so adamant against, against public against school, public. I hear a feedback now myself, but anyway, um, is because they're going to learn facts like we evolved from apes. They're going to learn facts like how everything started wasn't in the beginning God, is that there was this big bang, which has their own version of God, right? So right. why Christian education is important and why you should have your child in a Christian school if you're not going to carry on Christian home education is that you want the facts as they're presented to be in agreement with the word of God. And let's face it, if you have a classroom of 10 or 15 students, you have to have a basic curriculum that you follow. So it's going to be more that everybody has to conform. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying you have to recognize that's different than what a homeschool does. Because with a homeschool, you can take that student and that student can have an emphasis on particular things that he or she is interested in, which he can't necessarily do in the day school because you can't have 15 people all doing different things and trying to maintain order. So. Christian education is the fundamental and how you exercise it is how it fits into your family and your current situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that we, we think are important that we've been taught that, that we're, we get a steady diet of in the news or with our neighbors, lots of different ways. There's a steady diet of this stuff. And, we have to recognize the truth from the lies. And the way that we do that is, is not trying to sort through it ourselves. The way that we have to do that is that we can see what God says is true. What are God's command? Does this information line up with what God says is true? Because the scripture that admonishes us to take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ, that's not just you know, pushing out unhappy thoughts. What that means is to really look and see if this is in line with, with what God has said and God requires and what God commands of us. Right. 
there are two verses that I have applied to lots of different areas, health, education, etc. But it's the understanding that whatever you do, as seemingly mundane as eating or drinking, you do it to the glory of God. Education certainly falls under a whatever you do. And then the other aspect is the scripture says, whatever is not done in faith is sin. Now that's a biggie. That means that we need to think in terms of how we're educating our children, what we're spending our time looking at and deciding is important. Is this being done in faith? Am I doing this for the honor and glory of God? Or am I doing it because I'm wasting time? Or I don't want to seem out of touch with people who um, might criticize me because I don't know who the current senator is in my state, yeah. right? I'd rather have my children know who their family members are because someday those family members may need help and it's the family that's supposed to take care of them. So if you don't know who your uncle and your aunt is, but you know who your senator is, then I think maybe you have... Um, skewed priorities. Mm -hmm. Another thing, if you start looking at current events, um, like, like you said before, whether it's floods or droughts or fires or, or you know, the chaos and every, everything, then we, we can be pretty um, fearful. You know, I, I know a lot of people might just be, you know, wringing their hands and, and watching the news to find out, you know, what's, what's going on in the Middle East or where are we fighting now and how much of our um, budget is military, how much of our national budget is being spent on um, military and, you know, all kinds of things. We can really just, just, just get obsessed with, with these things and not actually be thinking biblically or honoring God at all, but live in a, in um, fear of, of men and circumstances that may not even be true, nor can we do anything about it. If we could do something about it, what would that be? Right. So you're right in as much as we can get fearful, but mm -hmm. sometimes this is a, a new way of thinking that has helped me recently. If I find myself with an apparently insurmountable problem that can't resolve, I've come to the conclusion I'm not looking at the right problem. That may be symptomatic of a deeper problem. So you brought up something about, is there going to be a war in the Middle East? And, um, you know, are young men going to have to go fight? Well, how many people ask the question, does the Bible have anything to say with who goes to war and when? Exactly. Is, is it gender specific? Is it age specific? Is it circumstance specific? Many people would be surprised to discover that the Bible says if you just got married, you shouldn't be sent to war for a year. The Bible calls it making yeah. your wife happy. In other words, get to know each other because the family is more important than any state interests. Yes. The Bible also says that there's a certain age that men should go to war. And it's not 18. Hmm. Right. So if we're trying to figure out, is it right? Should we send troops? Should we not send troops? The bigger question is, if it were a righteous war, under what circumstances and according to how God ordains it, should this even be carried out? And I think that's where the study of biblical law and understanding its applications for today, because certainly during the time of the Bible being written, there were not nuclear bombs. There weren't tanks. There weren't machine guns. But if we say, therefore, the Bible has nothing to say about when you'd go to war, then we're really left with somebody else setting an agenda. And if we're going to say, which we like to say, that every area of life and thought is to be governed by the word of God, then we better know what God says on these various things rather than relying on uh, the news commentator or the the editor of the newspaper or your friend on Facebook to tell you what to think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that um, the cal one of the things that I really appreciate about Calcedon is that there's lots of information to help us to, to put that biblical framework, uh, to build that biblical framework if we don't have it. So I want you to tell our listeners about how to get to the Calcedon website and some of those things 
that you have available for free so they can they can really build that biblical framework that's necessary to make the um the discer- to have discernment in these things All right well it the web address is calcedon c h a l c e d o n dot e d u e d u because when we got the website it's we're an educational institution we like to say calcedon exists to equip the self-governing Christian. Calcedon doesn't exist so we can tell everybody what to do. Calcedon exists to help people think in a biblical orientation and perspective. And when you said what things are for free, most everything in our website can be accessed for free. So there's more things that can be accessed for free than cannot. And that includes books and articles and audios and videos and various other blogs, etc. And I would suggest that if you have a particular interest, you go to the search bar at the top of the resources and just put in topics you're interested in or go along the side. There is a faceted um, search where you can narrow it down to things like government or theology or the church or American history, things like that, and find the resources. And then as you have questions, which I know you will, then come back and, uh, you know, ask the question here, or we have a system on the Calcedon site where if you have a question that you would like answered, you fill out that form and we'll get somebody to help you answer that question. Okay. And this is not uh, like a, something that's really a, a quick fix. It's taken me 58 years to um, learn these things wrong. <laughs> I don't think that we're going to be able to, um, fix, it's not going to be a quick fix. Um, and none of us are born again with perfect theology that it takes time and it takes work. And we have to, we have to put, we have to put in that work as, um, as first of all, just because that's what God calls us to, he calls us to our, our mind to be transformed. But when we have the responsibility to teach children and help our husbands and be a good neighbor. And then to be um, older women and teaching younger women, we have to be doing that with a, with a proper perspective. And, right. and the- you are correct that it, you know, it takes time to unlearn what you've learned, but I wouldn't want someone not to start because they think it's a massive undertaking. My experience with the many people I've interacted with in counseling and mentoring situation is that when you actively pursue obedience to God, there's this factor called the person of the Holy Spirit who helps you understand. So Mm -hmm. you don't have to wait another 58 years, Nancy, to get this, as you well know. (laughs) It's that you can start learning now and putting it into application and all the better if you're in a position where you have to teach someone because right. you'll learn the most when you're the one teaching. That's right. Some of the, um, you really do know that you understand it when you can explain it to your grandkids. And you also know when you don't understand it when you can't. So that tells you <laughs> that's your assignment for the day. Figure out how to explain it. How to explain it to the kids. Right. Yep. Well, I think we're a little bit over, um, but that's okay. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Do you have anything else that you want to uh, pop in here before we have to say goodbye? No, I think we're good. I think we covered it. And tune in next week. Uh, we have some interesting conversations ahead of time. And look for the uh, preview broadcast notification on Facebook. Uh, once we decide on a topic, we post it. We'll let you know. Next okay. week, friend. Bye-bye.